Right, 21 February 2024 and today I've got an update on the Sadak visit uh, that is one of the most critical stories that is going to be happening this week. I'm also going to be looking at the visit by Botswana uh, First Lady Neoma Sisi and other news that is happening around Zimbabwe. So as I mentioned yesterday, the Sadak team arrived in Zimbabwe uh, earlier in the week. Uh, that is, in fact, today we are on a Wednesday, right? So let's confirm this before I, I talk the deaths. So the, the Sadak team came to Zimbabwe and yesterday there were new developments and the new developments is that ED has obviously not allowed these guys to talk about the election issues. So yes, today is Wednesday. So yesterday, another person uh, came to Zimbabwe, uh, that is Jane Katerera. So let, let's confirm the, the name here. And she made statements at the airport. So that is her here. I'm going to show you the lady here. She's called Sadak Preparative Mission Head and Deputy Executive Sector Corporate Affairs, Judith Katerera, addresses media at the Robert Mugabe International Airport in Harare yesterday. So what has happened here is very simple. Uh, ED has not allowed these guys to do their work. Uh, and their work is to make sure that Zimbabwe complies with the conditions for holding the summit and for becoming chair of the summit. So Mnangagwa cannot just become a chairperson of SADAC. Well, let's say you're a warlord and you're shooting people in your country. You cannot become the head of SADAC. That is clear, and yesterday I explained this. However, what ED is trying to do is he's trying to tell SADAC that they cannot tell him anything, they cannot talk about the elections, and he's going to become the chairperson of SADAC. And he has sent uh, Jane here. Jane is the representative of Zimbabwe to SADAC. And I'm going to play for you a clip of Jane speaking. She said it herself that she is the representative of Zimbabwe to SADAC. So what she's saying here, it's not really, it doesn't make sense. And she is talking things that she does not understand. Uh, Sadak is not going to allow ED to become a chairperson without, first of all, dealing with the election issue. So let, let me show you a clip where she's speaking here. And then we'll take it from there. She's saying that, and she did not answer this question uh, properly. So you can go to Voice of America to look at this. Like I indicated, I'm a deputy secretary in charge of corporate affairs. And the purpose of this mission is the summit. So that's the area that we are focusing on. Uh, the elections and the summit are completely two different things. So we don't. Right. So here, uh, Jane is, uh, Kacher is lying. She, she's not telling the truth. The summit and Sadak and all the things that happened with Zimbabwe, they're interlinked. But let's go to 112. That is 112. Uh, that's where she, she introduced herself here. So I'm going to go slightly behind here. Right. So you hear her very, very clearly. Did you hear what she said? So you must take everything that she's saying in context of what she just said there. She is representing Zimbabwe at Sadak. The real Sadak team is supposed to discuss holistically the conditions of Zimbabwe to become chairperson of Sadak. This team that is got Jane uh, Katera, I don't even know if she's Jane, let me look again. I don't want to keep saying people's names wrong here because Neo is also Jane. So maybe I'm confusing the two. So she is... Uh, I want to correct myself here. Yes, she's Judith. I'm so sorry about that. Jane is uh, Neo, Neo Jane Masisi. So this is Judith uh, Katere. She, Katera. She's representing Zimbabwe at Sadak. The positions that she's saying here, they are the positions of the Zimbabwe government, not the Zimbabwe, the positions of Sadak. And you see that guy with the uh, suit at the back there, the guy with the, the checkered shirt. He keeps interjecting and lifting his hand. Uh, I think he's controlling what he's saying. 
over there. So this whole thing is a, is a scam. Uh, what, what is happening here with Jane, or with Judith, it's a scam. And they've not allowed the proper SADAC team to come in front of the cameras and speak. And the issue of rigged elections is not going to go away. The SADAC SIOM report is not going to go away. And there's obviously a faction in SADAC that believes that they can uh, railroad uh, or push SADAC to just accept ED as the chairperson of SADAC without going through uh, the report of SIOM and fixing all the issues there. And I don't think the presidents will allow it. They will not allow ED to just go ahead and become president of, C of SADAC without addressing the issues. And as I've said before, addressing the issues means uh, Chamisa and ED need to sit down and talk, address the election issues which is raised, put in place the reforms. Because there's no way that a country that is not uh, compliant is going to be chairperson of SADAC. Immediately, that, that becomes a conflict. You, you cannot have someone who is not compliant leading the body. And that can be challenged. I'm sure Chamisa can also challenge it. Uh, a lot of people can challenge it. But Chamisa should not wait. She should not just sit back as these processes are taking place. Because what ED is building here is a story. He's building a story that is going to be a uh, standard chairperson without question. And this needs to be challenged everywhere on every platform. Uh, people need to be sent out uh, by Chamisa to all the different countries and also to Zambia. The Zambians must start picking, speaking up. The Sadat guys, they must not keep quiet on this issue that is happening in Zimbabwe. This is a very, very, very big problem where someone that has been given a report is ignoring it and is continuing as if that report doesn't exist. And ED doesn't want to fix. Instead, he's going after the CCC, uh, which I think uh, is actually worse, is worsening the situation here. So uh, definitely, we don't have the proper SADAC team in Zimbabwe. What we have is Judith Katera, and who represents Zimbabwe at SADAC. She said it herself. I played it for you. It's only me who said it. She said, I represent Zimbabwe at SADAC. So that's not the SADAC team that is supposed to deal with the election issues. The election issues are still on the, on the agenda at SADAC. And the guys in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are obviously lying and trying to misrepresent the, the whole situation. So let's go to other stories. I want to quickly run through a bunch of stories. And um, first, I want to go to Nelson Chamisa. As usual, every day I start with the Nelson Chamisa tweet. Today is Robert Mugabe, uh, National Youth Day. And uh, Chamisa here has tweeted, this was at Doroy Camp in Mozambique before 1980 independence. The young people had so much hope in the future. This hope has not materialized. Things went wrong. 45 years later, even the young people of today still have this hope. Zimbabwe will not die because the young people will save it. It is a generational call. Are you in it? My Zimbabwe. One people. All right. So that is Nelson Chamisa. And uh, I always look at Chamisa's tweet. I've also looked at Mafume. And I, I'm playing you this tweet for a reason. He's showing you a book here by Jof Nyarota. And Jof Nyarota is, uh, he's saying the journalist is an outcast, Jof Nyarota now on sale. This is a book by Jof Nyarota, which is being uh, broadcast here by Mafume, who is the spokesperson of the CCC faction led by Washman Mube. And the reason why I'm playing this is that Nyarota, he, he's got some stories that I know that are quite crazy. And I, one day, I think I'll review a lot. But I, I think when you look at Zimbabwe and the guys who are in, who say they're Democrats and the stuff that they do behind the scenes, ah, you'll be surprised. So I, I don't know about Jufnia Rota. And I think many, many people will know what I know. They will tell you that this is crazy. Let, let's go to the pictures. Um, near Joy Masisi. Looking very nice. I like the dress. And she's with um, uh, First Lady Oxilam Nangabwa. She went to, uh, let's see the places that she went there. I think she went to Marsh East. She looked at the airport. And then she also went and looked at the farm. Uh, this is Black City Chick Forest Homestead, Marshallan East. That is the, the picture there. She also went to the University of Zimbabwe Innovation Center where she met Professor Mafumo. So I, I've been to this center when we started out. I went 
to look at this innovation center. I don't know what has happened there. Uh, I also looked at innovation centers at, at uh, MSU. I went and looked at the one at after university. I think the guys will remember when I went over there. But it's a better idea to have an innovation center. So Neo Jen she, she did very well. Uh, I think she's doing good uh, with the stuff that she's doing in Zimbabwe here. Then General Chwenga is in uh, Russia. So that is General Chwenga in Russia there. Uh, he's with the Russians. I don't know who is the girls. I think the ambassador to Zimbabwe is over there. Uh, and you can look at the video on the Herod YouTube channel. He spoke there. But General Chwenga himself, his speech was not publicized. So I, I hope I see the speech of General Chwenga. Then Zimbabweans, three Zimbabweans died in Mozambique. That is uh, three NRZ employees, engine men, Sunungurai, Mapuranga, Yadmen, Enoch, Tawabarira, and security, uh, Pride Femerepi. They died. You can see what happened there. The, the railroad for Zimbabwe is very, very bad. You look at that railroad. Those guys died at the corner there. That thing just flipped, and the three of them died at the spot. They didn't have a chance. Uh, and you know that the Mozambicans are fixing their side. The Zimbabwean guys are not fixing their side. So there is a terrible deterioration of infrastructure in Zimbabwe. I then want to go to uh, the issue of Washman Ngobe. Washman Ngobe has denied that he is working with Chabangu, or he was working with Chabangu in the records. And I believe him. I believe that Washman Ngobe was not part of the records. But then he was co-opted afterwards. So Tendai beat and Washman Ngobe and uh, Mafume, I don't think they were there in the beginning. My belief is that this was a CIO operation, which was led by the guys in that small committee uh, that I, I showed you. Uh, and, um, the, the guys were fighting last week. That was a CIO operation, and I don't think that in, involved Mube, BT, and Mafume. However, as it started getting traction, I think these guys then decided to jump on board. And what Mube is saying now is that he's going to try to negotiate with the Sengezo, with the Mpanans, with the Timber, and they form one big C, uh, CCC, which goes to Congress. And I think basically that's the right direction. I don't know how that's going to work. BT has been quiet. Kora has been quiet. They've not spoken. So let's see what happens. There's going to be massive developments there, especially when Nelson Chamisa launches in the next few weeks. Uh, he says, or oh, people tell, tell me that within the next, before the end of this month or beginning of next month, Nelson Chamisa is going to launch. Nelson Chamisa is doing very well. Uh, but strategically, it's very, very difficult for Chamisa to move forward because you must understand that whatever Chamisa does is going to impact him in ways that uh, you cannot even understand. If he decides to go with a political party, he's got a whole bunch of challenges. If he decides to go with a movement, he's got a whole bunch of challenges because he will need a political party to back him up in parliament. And if he goes with the political party, it means he has to remove everyone from the other party and convince them to step down, which I think is also in the works. Uh, guys are being told that if you want to join the new party, then you must uh, step down from parliament. So we might end up having another big election if that happens. If Chamisa forms a party and convinces everyone to step down, then they have a home to go to. Remember what I was saying, that people cannot just step down to go to nothing. So those are the two options on the table. Chamisa forms a movement and CCC remains strong. Or Chamisa forms a party and everyone steps down and with a mini general election, uh, which will result in everyone going to Nelson Chamisa. But ZANU PF is waiting with an amendment to deal with that situation. So this is how it is. And that's why I'm saying there's complications coming. Then Job Scala, uh, he broke down during an interview with uh, Trevor Nube. He broke down because he says his kids were so hungry when he was away. And the reality of him being away and being unable to provide for his family was just too much. Uh, Job Scala has also lost everything. He's lost, he's lost his company. I think he's had to sell his houses and whatever property that he had. And he has now stepped down from his movement. He's no longer the leader. He says it's going to be led by other people and he's just going to be a facilitator in that movement. So you can go and have a look at all those interviews that happened yesterday. Then uh, I want to look at 
the event for the uh, for today today is world social justice day and the zimbabwe lawyers for human rights is commemorating that day you can go and look at that statement on um, all the normal newspapers that you know the zimbabwe lawyers for human rights is very very important they have helped a lot of people to stay out of jail like literally i've had people from zimbabwe lawyers for human rights helping some of my family members uh, so I, I appreciate the work that they do and uh, people like Mkwananzi and currently the Glenview guys I remember when there was that made the CCC guys in court the Zimbabwe lawyers for human rights is helping those guys so I don't think most people understand we still have people who are going to court uh, because of the CCC issues that's why I'm saying the CCC issue is very very uh, sensitive you cannot just destroy the CCC because other people are spending time right now as you speak in court some are jailed and, and some have died so it's important for them to uh, to, to see what they can do about the CCC. It, it's not fair to just destroy the CCC. and then i want to look at um um tenabiti tenabiti has not spoken and it's very worrying for me when tenabiti is quiet because we want to know what he thinks about everything that is happening and this i, I expect these guys to convene a, com, a, com, a sort of some sort of press conference to talk about their plans and where we're going to go to next. Watchman Nube says the uh, the Congress the, 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 where they're going to do elections is going to happen within six months. So my estimation is it's going to happen in December, December 2024. Then we we'll have a new setup in the CCC. But he says they are hoping to do it within six months. They are having their meetings uh, through Zoom. So I don't know who they're inviting. I don't know what structures in place, but we want to see more public engagement. We also want to see more public discussion from Kwananzi. Kwananzi has been quiet ever since uh, Ngube spoke. What is he thinking about what Ngube said? Is Kwananzi now negotiating with uh, with Ngube? So we want to know all that. And Timba, uh, what is Timba thinking? Uh, what are they doing? So we want to see all that coming out in the open. All right. So I think we've covered it all. To recap, uh, Judith Katera is the representative of Zimbabwe SADC. She is not speaking for the SADC position on elections. SADC have given a clear position on Zimbabwean elections. The Zimbabwean election was rigged and the reforms need to be implemented. The elders have been trying to talk to ED. ED has been re refusing. ED has been refusing to engage on the issue of the election. And you won't be chairperson until that issue is dealt with. So, Judith Katera, what she's representing here is the position of the Zimbabwean government, not the position of, of SADC. In fact, the people who are supposed to be in the proper committee to discuss the August uh, uh, conference or, or SADC summit, 44th SADC summit, are not uh, these people that you saw there. That is just Judith with the CIO behind her. That, that guy was, uh, in, in fact, I, I think I should look for that video and you guys can look at your there's basically a guy standing behind him, telling him what to say, and, and that is not sad. Uh, I don't know what, what's happening there. Something very, very crazy. Now, let's look at the comments. <laughs> I'm saying, waiting for Fox News Taka. Uh, Taka. I don't know what Taka did. I don't follow him every day. I only follow him when he talks something very important. Uh, and he's saying he didn't have a blog, Saka. He did. The people that are there are his people. They're not people from Saka. Remember, the he is trying to create a narrative that everything's normal the election is passed everything's not normal the election is not passed if this election is not recognized by anyone even the guys in the zimbabwe human rights commission they have not recognized the, the election in zimbabwe there is no single observer mission that has issued a positive result about the zimbabwean election do you, do you understand the impact of that there is no single so show me any observer mission that has issued a report that said the zimbabwe election was free and fair so, so uh, for, for ed it's very simple go into negotiation with chamisa and start the reform process there's nothing else that you can do uh philip kuzai will tell us the juicy piece about jeffrey rota not the dress <laughs> okay i'll tell you mkoma philip so Jeff. Yarota, right? He is like a big journalist, right? And he's Democrat and all that. But do you know that Grace Mugabe 
secretary as a baby with uh, Geoffrey Arot. So how can that be? That you're being chased by Mugabe and then you put a baby with his secretary. That's crazy. So those who know, <laughs> I've given you that. <laughs> I didn't even want to say this, but it's crazy. Uh, I've met the boy sometime, and this is, well, Geoff can confirm this. He's not even paying like anything for that job. Uh, let's go to um, Koma Chimbo. It is nothing, no, it's nothing. Mandela like nothing. Yes, I agree with you, Mkoma Chimbo. So, remember, I talked to the CCC guys. I know what they're doing and what they're saying. Chamisa is the man in terms of Zimbabwean politics. But Chamisa cannot win an election by himself. That is what we're saying here. So, it's like saying Mandela by himself was going to win the election in South Africa. He is popular, or he was popular, but he, he did not do it himself. He had to work with other people. Right? So, what I would prefer is Chamisa to change his leadership style. And that's not me, it's everyone. Uh, obviously, if you can go to his Twitter, he said something. Uh, Chinoputsa said something. Mube said something. Mafume. All these people can be wrong. And people want Chamisa to change his leadership style. And what they have a problem with Chamisa is this thing. Uh, I want to show you the thing that people have got a problem with Chamisa. This thing. Our biggest thing is what we call this strategic ambiguity. The doctrine of making sure that the enemy doesn't know what we are doing. See a hamba nyovani. See angena nyovani. Backwards. But we are going to make it. <laughs> Chamisa. <laughs> strategic ambiguity. No one wants strategic ambiguity. Okay, let's agree. No one wants strategic ambiguity. For now, for example, right now, we've got strategic ambiguity. Uh, what is going to happen? When is it going to happen? Is it going to be a party? Is it going to be uh, um, a movement? Who is going to be in it? This is confusion. And that is what people don't want. People want Chamisa to show direction, to show leadership. We want mass action. Uh, do you guys understand? People want mass action. They want the quick exit of Nangagwa. If you call my section now with what Nangagwa is doing with the land, every place in Zimbabwe is ready for my section. That's why I'm saying Chamisa is losing all these opportunities. And he forms something quickly and he moves quickly and he deals with the issues that are happening in the CCC and shows direction. On one hand, we can have a mini general election. On the other hand, we have a debt for my section. Then we move forward. That's what people want. And everyone can work together. Everyone doesn't have to like each other, but they can all work together. Uh, Jack, you're saying President Nelson Chamisa has no problem with us. To you, yes. I don't have a problem with Chamisa. But, uh, Jack, if you follow this uh, direction that you're following now with Chamisa, you will never see the presidents. And then after Chuenga, uh, Pano, yeah, who is this uh, other guy? <laughs> they're they're going to rotate each other there and you won't be in office. And you'll still be fighting. Remember the fighting in the CCC and MDC is not new. Changira himself was subject to these fights. Kupe was subject to these fights with Chamisa. In 2009, in fact, 2008, uh, let's say 2009. Myself, Trasen Jovo, and Kalipani Pugin, the uh, senator, we had our first meeting where Kupe's people were trying to arrange a discussion between Kupe and, and Chamisa. Uh, you, you remember there's a picture of this whole thing. 2009, today is, uh, sorry, 2019. Now it's um, 2024. <laughs> That's five years. And Kupe eventually sorted out the issues with uh, uh, with Chamisa. But failure for Chamisa to address the Kupe issue we lost him the 2018 election. Do you know that? The votes that Kupe got, that's what allowed Nangaba to go into office. So Chamisa must not have strategic ambiguity. He must work with everyone. That means he must literally find everyone and say, let's form a broad movement. The same thing that... Um, uh, 
So I think we're done here uh, for today. Uh, Judith, I don't know what she's doing in Zimbabwe, and I don't know she's talking. Uh, Judith here, she, she's not representing Sadak. The rural people from Sadak have been blocked by Mnangagwa. Mnangagwa doesn't want to talk about the election. And Dr. Judith Katera, who used to work for the African Development Bank, her position is to represent Zimbabwe in Sadak because these people second people there. But the election issue is not dead. People should not answer questions that they cannot answer. So Judith should not answer questions that she cannot answer. Sadak has got a report on Zimbabwe that says the election was not free and fair. And the election, there is a number of actions that need to be taken. She cannot say, ah, the election is not an issue. It is an issue. And Zimbabwean guys, when you see her, don't greet Judith in Iran. Like, <laughs> let her go to the airport by herself and fly out. We are fed up. And, and your parents, Judith, are suffering in Zimbabwe because of this situation. We need this issue solved. We don't want people who are ambiguous about the current situation in Zimbabwe. We need a resolution to a crisis. And that crisis needs to be provided within a dialogue between Nelson Chamisa and ED. They need to sit down on a table. Chamisa has already called for that dialogue. And everyone has said that they must state it, uh, speak with one position. That dialogue must happen. The issues in Zimbabwe are an embarrassment to, to the whole Sadak region. And Mnangawa is not even being involved in key activities in Sadak because of this. Like now, Zimbabwe is not in the DRC because of the election issues. So how can Zimbabwe be chairperson when, when they're not even worthy to be in, in the um, Sadak conflict? Zimbabwe is being withdrawn from Mozambique. These are the kind of things that I'm explaining to you. And I, I know the, the stuff that they're talking about is, uh, is their own thing. It's not um, uh, what Sadak represents. And I, I hope and wish that the Sadak guys will make a position on this Zimbabwe issue. But yeah, yeah, I think you guys want to see Neo's dress. There it is, looking very, very nice, uh, Neo, uh, Masisi. So we need more visitors with, from first ladies like here. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And if there's anything else during the day, I'll be back to update you. But otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you very much, everyone, and a good day.